Okay, it's gone half past six here. I'm hitting the start streaming button. Just be aware there's always a slight delay uh, before we go live. So uh, once I know it's gone live, I'll give you a shout. So howdy, I'm Matt. Apparently we are live, which is happy days. I'm just making my way across to the desk. And in this live episode, we've got a very special unboxing for you, which is the Dart XL Extreme. Now I'm sure Many of you have seen it being reviewed on a whole collection of different RC channels. However, to my knowledge of, I think this is the first non-freebie uh, Dart XL review. And also you'll notice in front of me, we've got a whole collection. Uh, we've got a collection, we've got the Mini Drac, uh, and also we've got the E-Wings Vortigaunt, so that we can do some direct like-for-like -like comparisons, because keep that in the back of your mind. Uh, the model which you're about to see, the Dart Extreme XL, was bought out of my own money for my own abuses. Uh, and I do like to make a point that it's not a freebie for review because let's face it, uh, everybody's going to like a free model. I'm sure you'd like a free model as well. But hey ho, we live in the real world and know things are slightly different. So uh, to give you a heads up, I do have those of you which have been following along with the stories, uh, what's been going on. Uh, Luna is actually in the office. We'll, you'll get to meet her in a few moments time as well. Uh, if you can let me know if the audio is good, that'll be fantastic. Uh, so with that, what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to go and get these models off the desk uh, so that we can get on uh, with the actual unboxing. So that's the right wing mini track which we've got here. Uh, check in the right wing website, which is actually technically down today, uh, is that you can buy this for $175, so about 150 quid. Keep that in the back of your mind because we will be doing some like for like comparisons. And actually, I've got a bit of a wild card for you, which some of you which should join beforehand might already know about. Uh, we've also got the E-Wings Vorti as well. Uh, this is a self-build model, which is 90 quid, 89 pounds, something like that. Absolute steal. Um, mine's actually held together with tape because I broke the wing in half, broke the wing in a half a couple of days back. Uh, and uh, Ewan <laughs> from E-Wings was really nice uh, and actually sent me some more spars, which I paid for. So, uh, fantastic. Right. Uh, I've just seen, and by the way, you can see the chat which is going along down the right hand side of the screen. Uh, and I'm just keeping an eye on the iPad because I've got it going on here as well. Uh, Carabo says, Love the mini drac. I do also love the mini drac as well. It's one, again, it's going to be nice to do these comparisons uh, because the mini drac has got characteristics which are better than the Vorti, and the Vorti's actually got characteristics. Uh, over the mini drag and we'll find out about those a little bit later but to be honest I'm sure you just want to get on with the unboxing now I'm sure many of you would love to see the unboxing and you'll notice it's still taped up uh, of the Bonanza but we're not going to be doing that pile of poo because uh, it's actually kind of interesting those of you who have been following on with the Bonanza series I've actually been messaged by a couple of pilots in the background and they've had exactly the same issues as me they've gone to chuck it and the models just spun over in the sky Something very odd going on there. We'll address that at a later date. That model's been here for like two, three weeks. I've just not got round to, um, what should we call it? Even unboxing it to, to actually put it together. Because the other one is still sat down there on the floor. I've just not had five minutes uh, to, to get to them at all. So, uh, by the way, as many of you know, I'll never uh, apologize for uh, being busy with work because we all know work pays for phone. Happy days, hence why we've got a great big chunk of foam here on the desk. So I have been in there and I had a quick nose to, just to confirm it was the Dart XL. Uh, you've got to give credit where credit is due. From everything which I've seen from this model so far, somebody's really spent a lot of time, effort and energy uh, in the actual design the, uh, and the implementation uh, of the model as well. I think, it, and it shows, it, what we're looking at right now is actually a very polished product. Uh, if you didn't know that um, Zoe HD uh, is, or Zoe, yeah, Zoe HD is also uh, just basically a brand name of Sonic model. Uh, they've just come to the forefront over the last, we'll say six to eight months because uh, they seem to have got some of the older molds out again. Uh, and I'll stick that up. It's massive. Uh, they've been and got some of the older molds out for like the big Sky Hunter, which went, uh, it was very difficult to actually purchase. And I've lost a dog. There is one in here somewhere. <laughs> She's there somewhere. Um, and it, some of the models were getting really hard to purchase and they've come out uh, and they've been and brought those to the market. So hats off for them 
uh, for doing that. And of course, we, many of you know about the AR wing. Uh, there's also, I forget, collection, oh, Nano Talon. Uh, there's a whole collection, the HD wing, which was also the uh, ready-made RC. Is it the Sky Ray? The Hobby King had the same one as well. Uh, they're all just different rebranded. Uh, so yeah, Sonic model. Um, yeah, very, very curious. Also very, very curious because you don't see them on the Hobby King website. Work that one out. Uh, you would have thought that being based in Hong Kong, that there would be better links with the actual brands themselves, but no, they're not there. Very, very odd. So uh, as you've seen, this model's literally just been turned up uh, and we'll be taking it a look together. Uh, if you've got any questions or comments as we go along, please just ask in the live chat. I'll do my best to um, keep an eye on your chat as we go. I just saw a comment in there. Uh, Yelly, yes, a long time no see. Yeah, just been busy with work, life, and some of you may have noticed I've lost about a stone and a half uh, so far. So I've lost a, a fair amount of weight, and I've also got a little visitor. I'll tell you what. Yeah, pop it. This is Luna, by the way. I don't know if you've... Uh, this is a miniature schnauzer. I've never had a dog before. Uh, and in about May time... Hello, beautiful. Are you going to say hello to that camera up there? Go on, up there. Look up. Up there. There you go. You say hello. <laughs> I've never had a dog before. And about May time, I kind of decided that I wanted a dog. But I needed to talk the family around. Uh, and then, anyway, I went to see a little puppy. And somebody fell in love. <laughs> yes. Uh, so that dog cost me an arm and a leg. And a whole new kitchen floor. Topic for a different day. So that was Lunikins. She's an absolute little nutter, uh, and that uh, was well worth everything which I had to go through to get her in the door. Absolutely beautiful little one there. Uh, Robert says she has your eyes. <laughs> Good lad. <laughs> Quality. <laughs> Happy days. Right. Um, again, you'll see me just moving on quite quickly so I can get this one built up. Uh, I am very, very interested in the foams on the wings. Right. What I was really concerned about, and thank goodness they've not been and done, uh, it was the Zo HD Orbit Wing. Uh, and what they've been and done was create like an inner structure inside of the wings to keep. Don't eat the receiver, please, Luna. Thank you, beautiful. <laughs> you can't see it. You'll have to take me a word for it. She's down there munching, munching on the antenna of one of the little TBS antennas and giving my webcam uh, one of the run cams a lick. <laughs> uh, anyway, I was really worried that the uh, orbit wing has like these inner structures and they've put the foam over the top of it, which makes for an extremely light wing. However, uh, one hit and that would be it. it. It would be foam snow. But that's not the case here. Uh, we've got holes along the top. And by the way, you'll see for the camera uh, in the picture in the top bottom right hand corner, I've got a... Uh, uh, a top camera as well. Uh, we've got these little lines here to for put vortex generators in there, um, but it might be me, but they look extremely parallel uh, to the actual wing section and themselves. They're supposed to be off by 15 degrees or so, uh, and that's not the case at all. Uh, anyway, let's fire ourselves on. Uh, one thing which I've not seen anybody else pick up a note on just yet uh, is that... Um, why would you put bottom mounted servos on a wing which prime, which has got no real fuselage to keep them out of the dirt? It's all fine and dandy putting a piece of foam in front of them. Um, but one key difference between this model and also the Mini Drax design and also uh, the Vorti is that on those models they have the servos mounted on the top. And the reason why you put servos on the top of the wing and not on the bottom, because the only reason they've put servos on the bottom is to keep the top of the wing looking pretty. And someone's eating some model down there. Uh, sorry, I've got a distraction there. Uh, the only reason you would do that is just purely for aesthetic aesthetics. However, if you put the server on the bottom, when, and you think about when you're on the sticks, the vast majority of the time, your uh, stick inputs are up, okay? You're pulling back on the stick and you're bringing the elevons up. As such, these little push rods, they flex under pressure, especially depending on your rag and the nuts off it, uh, and that's why it's always better to have the servos on the top, because you're pulling the steel rod, not pushing it, which allows it to bend, and of course if you look on there, not only the rod can bend itself because it's not particularly um, 
Uh, it's just made out of just Chinese metal. And also you've got the plastic piece on the end. And of course you imagine that underneath pressure, it's got the ability to bend as you can see up there. And that's not ideal, which you would not get if the servo was mounted on the top of the wing. And I can't believe nobody else has picked that one up because for me, no way in a blue monkeys would I mount a servo underneath the, underneath the wing. I just don't get that at all, other than purely for aesthetic reasons. So uh, that was one thing which I picked up and I hadn't seen anybody else pick up on it because it does make a difference. The uh, Wing Wing Z84, the only way to improve a Wing Wing Z84, which is one of the best models of all time, uh, is to mount the servos on the top of the wing because when you really push that model to the extremes, uh, is that you, if you go into a massive dive and try pulling out, the servos just crap out uh, because the, the servos don't have the torque in them, the push rods are bending, the plastic clevises are bending as well, and they just can't cope with the load. However, put the servos on the top of the wing and you can completely mitigate that, that, that issue. Uh, now, if I remember correctly, those just stick in, and again, I think they've got to go through and just very. Again, like I said, I don't want to be too negative about this model because it doesn't warrant being negative about this model. Uh, one thing to know, it's very, very simple wing connectors. I know for some people it's always a big thing that, oh, can I put it in a back ruck, uh, rucksack or something like that and carry it up a mountain? Um, you could do it with this one, to be honest. I would probably suggest that there's better models out there which you could do that with. Um, but it does, again, ease of construction. Very, very simple. And one other nice little thing which I saw on Sir Andrew Newton's video, uh, is that the server connectors down here, they, like I said, someone has really thought about this. Not only do you have the server connector on there, is that up underneath there, you've got a second connector, which you can then, as you'll see on the top camera, that will then run out, and then you can put your video transmitter or your receiver right on your wingtip, so that you can go for maximum separation to get your, uh, Vitex v v uh, away from your receiver. We did a the FPV diamond a couple of a couple of weeks back uh, in a video, and that was the basic premise: is that you just separate everything as possible away from each other, just to reduce noise. And again, I know somebody's going to say about quads and stuff like that, where it's all ran together. Well, fixed wing, you've got the room to do it. So, uh, best thing to do is just take advantage of it, uh, the room that you've got. So let's have a quick look what we've got in here. Uh, nice bit of Velcro, we've got a flight controller mount, we've got some Velcro, I'm going to skip that, we've got Zo like, like I said, someone's really, someone took the time to design and then go and find someone to print them off for them and then include them in the package. Like I said, there's definitely some time, effort and energy being put into this model. Uh, we've got a little bag of Vortex generators, I'm going to pop those in there. Uh, we've also got a propeller, which I don't know what that is, that looks like... I want to say a 9x6, but there's, oh, a 9x45. I was, I was quite close. So that's 9 inches, 9x45. It's not a lot of grab on the propeller, to be honest. Um, so rumor has it you can get 40 minutes of flight time out of this. And um, you finished eating that, Luna? No, she's uh, trying to demolish a model down there. Um, so 9x45, that's not particularly grabby. Uh, so, yeah, no wonder you were getting a decent amount of flight time on there. Oh, like I said, a lot of time, effort and energy was put into this model and it shows. But well, one thing which we will look for in a moment, because on the front of this model, while you can use uh, a GoPro Session, a Runcam 3S, uh, a Mobius or Runcam 2, which is definitely my preferred camera of choice, uh, is that by, when you insert this block, you actually block up the air vents on the poop scoop on the nose. Always a bit of a concern. I need to go and rescue the foam off the dog because she's down there making a right state of it. Thank you. You know, I'm being busy. Aren't you? You little monkey. He's got Cuban's little belly going. Go that way, you. Go on. Go and get your head job. Good girl. <laughs> it's like having another child, honestly. But, no. She's absolutely mint. She's... Uh, not eight weeks, she's ten, just over ten weeks now. So, so adorable. That fuselage is way bigger than what I was expecting. There's nothing quite like seeing it in the flesh. Because it, it's all fine and... Sorry, it's hit the microphone. It's all fine and dandy seeing it on the camera and stuff, but until you see it in the flesh, that is mahoosive. That is pretty damn big. Oh. 
try and ease him to smell off. Smells fantastic. Right, let's get this great big humongous box out of there. Uh, and I sincerely hope that you've got a recycling centre somewhere near you because uh, someone did mention about it being like a MacBook for packaging. Uh, and I do kind of agree with you, which is that lots of packaging there. I don't think this model is going to get easily damaged, which unfortunately is something which we have seen here numerous times over the past two years or so. Uh, but on a positive note, you ain't gonna, you ain't gonna be breaking. It. It's gonna be very unlikely it's gonna be turned up and it's broken. Right, we've got a spar. I'm trying to work out is that. Yeah, that's making a good noise. I reckon that's carbon fiber just by the noise it's making on the desk. I am gonna quickly flip back over uh, to the live chat uh, and we'll take uh, a quick look at the fuselage uh, and we'll also get the wings stuck on as well. Uh, the one bit which I'm sure we're all interested in, battery bay. One look at this, we will definitely get ourselves a 5200 4S patty in that nose. Uh, let me go and grab one. So that is like the de facto standard on a model. Is it any good? Because can you fit a 5200 4S pack in it? Uh, and the blatant answer to that is absolutely yes. It was almost, what's up squirt? You grounding at me for, you plank. Um, not you, dog. Uh, <laughs> is that, uh, that is like the de facto standard when it comes to uh, these models. Can you go and put yourself a 5200 4S pack in there? Because a 5200 4S pack gives you loads, and I mean loads of flight time. Uh, even on a mini drac, it wide open throttle, you're still talking 12 minutes of full throttle action uh, with a few mixed bits in it. Uh, and you bring it down and you can just load it up another one and off you go again. Uh, and she seems to be behaving. She's gone back to eat the um, TBS antenna. Anyway. 5200 pack in there. The one which I do, again, let me just put this in here, make sure I get this up the right way round, which is the right way round. That was the thing which I saw that nobody really picked up on is that if you looked up in there in the nose, if I take that out, so the phone block out, oi, thank you, no. Leave the poor Vortigon alone, you little monster. We might be seeing a theme here going on at some point in the future. Don't worry, I'll teach you to go and eat Andy's models and Austin's, but don't tell them. Shh. Right, coming back to the <laughs> what she got on there. Uh, it's all fine and dandy getting your camera up in the nose, but the reality is, is that what air vent you do have up in there in the nose, again, you do need air to go through the center of the model. It's again to keep your battery cool. Uh, if anything, and again, if you've got other electronics going on, especially in the front of the model, by the time you ram that little foam block up in the nose, is that you have been blocked up 100% of all the airflow in the poop scoop in the nose. Uh, and that was the other thing as well. That nose really is, I know you've got a block up underneath here, but you've seen the places where we fly. We fly on, a, well, we fly on two farms that's gonna fill up with poo. That's gonna be worse than, and I can't believe I'm saying this because it's such a, this is gonna be worse than the EF Extra poop scoop. And that was the prime, like, worst design going because it just, it was on the bottom and first flight, it just filled up with poo. Uh, and then you end up picking mud out of it every time you fly, if you can be bothered. Uh, this one has definitely got, this looks like it's got exactly the same tendency as well. Uh, one thing to be careful of, which is something else which I picked up, is that if you look at the nose side on, in fact, if I put this round like that, okay, it's got quite a slanted nose on the front. However, the, what you can see is up in here, it's not as steep an angle, but there's definitely an angle in there for the FBV camera. So when you're flying, it's gonna look like that you're closer to the ground than what you are. And that's something which I've been trying to work my best on is to bring my FPV cameras up level in the camera. Because if you tilt it down just a touch, it means that it feels like that you're like this far off the ground, but in reality, you're this far off the ground. Whereas that I wanna be this far off the ground and know exactly where the model is uh, in the Z axis, be, uh, sorry, in the Y axis, because that's absolutely vital to me hitting or not hitting a tree. So just go careful of that one. It is tilted down slightly. And that's not a good thing because you're judging gaps at speed 
that's not a good thing. And again, it's, you may be two, three, four, five, six, seven fields away, five meters off the ground. You need to know where you're sticking your model. And again, that was just a tiny point which I picked up and I'm glad that I'm aware of that now because then I can make sure I can bring my camera back up. Uh, also, just a point on there as well, uh, that hole will need enlarging, uh, need to be enlarged. Uh, because I used, uh, my, again, my preferred camera is the Runcam Owl Plus, which is a much, much bigger lens. Uh, so I need to cut out or dremel out that hole so I can fit a decent sized camera uh, in an uh, FPV camera in the nose. I'm here wondering, oh no, she's eating the bonanza. We'll leave her to it. She can eat that or as much as she likes. Uh, taking a look at the back of the model, uh, there was one curiosity which I saw, who was it? Um, again, Sir Andrew Newton, just thinking back to his video. Uh, it's one very, like an oddity that you have these screws on the back in here to hold this back section in. I'm not actually gonna say that's bad at all. I think that's because once you've put your stuff in here, your flight controller, if you need one or want one in there and the other stuff, you're very rarely gonna go in there, okay? And unlike, I always think, what was it? The Skywalker Falcon. It was a really, a look it up on Banggood, really cheap wing, uh, one point summit meter wingspan, flew really well, but the canopy blew off. How frustrating, you can't buy a second, you can't, I even contacted Skywalker directly. You cannot buy a canopy for the model. Um, as such, I think I just gave it away to Andy in the end. Uh, and just say, and they have it. It's just, and he knew what went on with it. Um, so that wasn't good at all. Anyway, let's get back to this fuse large. Some quick noise in there. Uh, plenty of room for a normal flight site. So again, you can see the time, effort, and energy which has gone into this model. You've got a plate in there, which is we, and we had the parts in the box for the standoffs uh, for a normal flight controller, um, like a, a Maytech F722 board, for example. Or of course you could just Velcro in uh, and stick an Eagle Tree Vector in there or similar. I can hear that Luna is crunching on something down there. Uh, what are you eating, hun? What are you eating? Oi. She's been down there, being very, very quiet, and I, all I can hear is crunch, crunch, crunch. What are you eating? Open up, open, open. Thank you. As you can tell, we've had to do that a few times. Don't get your edge off. <laughs> it's not even going to. Those of you which have had puppies before, you know full well what's going on here because uh, someone's down there and they know that you're distracted and as such, they're taking full advantage of it, aren't you, Poppet? Brilliant. Right, um, coming back to the flight controller space, loads and loads of room in there. The wings are very simple. There was two screws which we had here somewhere, which I've probably misplaced on the desk. Uh, and we'll, um, I'm just gonna put the screws on the back of there. I'm not gonna screw on the wings because uh, we won't be flying it for a couple of days as <laughs> she wanders off with a wing spar. <laughs> ah, nothing quite like uh, having new pets in the household. Right, have I just chopped that wire in? No, I've got to go in for the other side. Put the main spar in. A build time for this thing is just gonna be a couple of minutes really. Uh, the bit which is going to take you the most amount of time uh, really is just setting up your flight controller to go on there. Uh, that's it really, because there's nothing really much more to it. They've included, uh, this is only available as a plug and play kit, so you get yourself a only a 30 amp ESC, which is probably no big surprise. I would go careful on that uh, if you were running that on, on a 4S. Uh, and maybe you were over propping it. So to be honest, I was looking at the nine by four five prop thinking, really, I need to go and stick an eight by six on it. Uh, and then, because we'll be running it on 4S. Um, but I'll keep to whatever they say in the manual. Uh, so, because I don't want to go on and adapt this model uh, because that's not fair on you really, is it? So what we'll do, we'll go and fly it. We'll absolutely paint it living nuts off and that's one thing that's actually one comment which came up in the facebook group earlier uh, when we were chatting about this model uh, is that i'm pretty sure the person who was mentioning it also seen the same video as what i did um because i was sat in front of the tv watching the youtube video uh, screaming at it go on give it some nuts and a few other obscenities in there thank you that way please pop it thank you uh to for them to actually put the 
thumb up on the throttle. It's all fine and dandy. Pussying around with a model in the sky, just making sure it flies all right and everything. Oh, well, that was the other thing as well. The rolls on these are not very good uh, from what I've seen uh, so far. And that's not the only... I've seen that over two videos now. Uh, and the roll rate has been quite disappointing, to say the least. Um, like again, I'm, I'm picking up just bits which I've seen for so far. Now, anyway, let me get back to my notes to make sure I'm on, I'm on topic. And also, hey, get out of here. That's the mini drag. We don't eat the mini drags. Go and eat the bonanza. Yeah, you got hiccups now. <laughs> She's been down there eating the bonanza. She's filled herself up on that. And I'm going to go at the mini trap, bless it. Um, Luna. Thank you. No. You can all but try. Right. Uh, as far as foam density goes, one thing which, again, nice touch, which has been thought about, is that on the leading edges, they have been a put um, some plastic protectors on there. Now, there was also uh, UAV Futures. Uh, there was a very unfortunate circumstance. Luna! No. Good girl. Uh, there was an unfortunate circumstance that he came in and uh, he smashed it up and the nose had snapped off. Uh, that is actually one consideration which I think I'll be doing on this one. Uh, is that, yes, I will be doing that. Is that down this fuselage section here inside... I'll be putting, I've got some four millimeter carbon rods uh, and I'll be gluing them up on the insides of here because that shouldn't happen that the nose snaps off. If I think about the mini drag, for example, uh, and a little doggy who's eating headphone wires, thank you, uh, is that if I think about that with the mini drag, I've been and hit that in the ground so many times before and I'm not talking about little nose punts I'm talking like failed launches hitting stuff spiraling off into the ground one of those times like you just think how can it cope with it and the mini drag has done just so so well to say the least uh, and I think one of those a couple of the key factors is number one it's molded EPP uh, and I can tell you the foam the molded EPP on the mini drag uh, is way better than this this is actually quite it's it's you can depress it too easily, so the density could definitely be improved on there. And again, it's not even a touch upon the mini drag. Um, but coming back to, to the mini drag, it is such a dense foam which they've got on there. And models like these, where people are going to be flying them fast, is that, again, let's put square it down and find a toy for a second, is that you want to make sure that it does stay in one piece uh, if you do twat it. And also, just to be frankly honest, Trying to laminate this model is going to be a right royal pain in the rear. I know the wings are relatively straightforward, but until when you get to the wing whip, wing tips, you've got them folded over, so that's going to be awkward. Uh, and that fuselage doesn't look like the easiest one I've ever done. I'm not even going to sure. I might only laminate the bottom of it just to keep the poo out. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, let's get to your questions. Uh, it's fine. I'm, again, I'm just sharing my thoughts and my feelings as they come up and as I'm seeing these on there. Uh, Rich Russell does say, uh, foam screws on the rear. Yes, absolutely. Uh, let's have a quick look. Caro says, can't find any Runcam Owl 2s. Yeah, Runcam Owl Pluses is the camera which I use. You can't get them anymore. Uh, Andy, one of the guys which we fly with, uh, it was really kind. He had one which he wasn't using uh, and he kind kindly... Um, let me have it. So that was happy days because you just can't get them. You can't even buy them direct from Runcam. Uh, so we'll see there on there. Uh, move on there. So me, look, again, looking at your chat. No, so Stefan, the hour's still not, uh, ava not available anymore. Uh, so my... <laughs> uh, Van says, some of us certified to, I'm not saying the C word, whatever the flight controller. So just can't uh, justify near $200. Uh, Austin says, uh, Oi, Ogborn, watch it. Don't need dog to, dogs to destroy models. Absolutely. Uh, right, moving on. So, yeah, Dart XL. I will mod it. I will put some carbon fiber rods running up on the inside of there just to give that nose uh, some extra strength. So, right now, You've seen me unbox this, and this is one thing to always keep in the back of your mind. It's all fine and dandy having an unboxing video and a chit chat about the model, 
because we're able to put it into perspective, which I will now go and grab the mini drac as we're chatting away here, uh, and we'll take a look side by side uh, to see how they compare. Now, actually, there's some irony here for you. The Dart XL looks bigger than the mini drac, so I'm just gonna put these on top of each other uh, to take a look to see how they compare like for like. And I'm not, not too sure if you're seeing this in the camera or not, but I can tell you that's almost, almost exactly the same width on wingspan. Uh, the fuselage on the Extreme XL is definitely bigger, that's for sure. The, the Mini Drac is got definitely, uh, you've got a more sleeker nose and it's just, it's beautiful the way the Mini Drac just comes in. If I put that up on that camera, you'll see what I mean. Just how it swoops in and comes around. You can just, it's, you can just imagine the air hitting it and just being swept around or of course being the yeah, air technically from the, because of the swept forward wings, which are only very, very slightly swept forwards, uh, come in and then that's where you've got very large fins in the middle uh, because to be honest, these tips on the end and the same on the mini drac, uh, they only add a little bit to the flying experience. Um, although I would argue vitally important because I've been, I know when I'm missing a wingtip because it will catch me out with some of the stuff which I do. Um, but actually, for, absolutely, the Mini Drac is definitely a more well sculptured model uh, as such. That's why it does, what, 110 miles an hour out of the box, you know, with the right wing powering setup uh, on there. So actually, I'm quite surprised uh, on how close they are and not in wingspan, uh, but the actual, again, I'm putting it up on there. Yeah, it's definitely got, I wouldn't be surprised if somebody at ZOHD actually owns a Mini Drac uh, because it's too similar. How come you have exactly the same wingspan and exactly the same fuselage depth? Um, that doesn't necessarily happen by accident, does it? So I would raise a question there, or question mark at least, that's too similar. Uh, on there, you would have fought over a collection of models if you think, actually, what I'm gonna go and do, I'm gonna move the mini drag out of the way. I'm gonna stand that one up over here. What's down there, should I say? We're gonna get the Vorti up. Uh, so we'll use the inverse of this, which is the Vorti, which I know you and have spent an awful lot of time uh, working on to, to get it to the stage where it is. So this is the Vorti. Uh, again, just to put it into perspective, uh, this Vorti allows you to fly with two 5200 packs, not just one, uh, and uh, is 89 pounds as a kit. The hardest thing, mm, putting a bit of laminate on it, which is about that. Uh, but uh, anyway, the Vorti, bigger wingspan, not so swept forwards back uh, on the wings themselves, uh, and the Vorti is a much, much thicker cord on the wing. Uh, especially compared to the Mini Drac and also uh, the Dart XL. Uh, and just need to keep an eye on two little puppies to see what you're doing. Good girl, well done. You don't even want to know. So coming back onto the topic, I tell you what, let's move the Vorti over here. Let's move the Mini Drac. I'm going to run out of back, run out of desk very, very quickly. Because I've only got so much desk up here. It's actually clean for once. It was very easy. I just set up the cameras for us to go live, and that was it. Let's go and stick the my belt in there. Right, and then we'll put the Dart XL up there. Okay, so let's before we get to the Dart XL, which is still very much a question mark over, because like I've said, and I'm sure you've not seen anybody really giving it a full knacker and not caring. Okay, that was the other thing which pissed me off. I, I'm sorry, I'm gonna go off on a tangent. I don't apologize for it, it annoys me. Uh, and it goes back to one of the funding, fundamental prin principles of the YouTube channel. You got a model for free, so why did you not absolutely rag it off and go and try and hit stuff with it? Very frustrating. Anyway, coming back onto the topic, the mini drac. $175, again, that's confirmed prices. I literally looked it up today. $175, and an absolute corking model in the top five models of all time ever created. 
Uh, and the reason why it's up there in the top five models which has ever been created uh, is because purely of its locked in feel. If you look back through the YouTube channel, there's loads of videos of the Mini Dragon. In fact, there's a, there's a full blown review uh, much later on when I've had it for a year or more. Uh, and the Mini Drac is the only model which I own which will, it sits its ass down in the sky and it locks in. Once you experience that feeling, you just hunt for it in every other model, and I've not felt it in. And I'm here looking at the amount of foam which is behind your the camera where you're sat. It's just unparalleled for that. It just sits its butt in, and off you go, unparalleled. And I need to keep an eye on where that little doggy's gone. Luna, what are you eating? I can hear munching going on it. What? That's it. Good girl. Good girl. You eat the bonanza. Uh, anyway, we'll talk about the forty now. The Vorti, as a kit, is available for £89 here in the United Kingdom. Uh, again, confirmed pricing today. The Vorti does not have, the, does not exhibit that feature. The Mini Drac is the only model which I know which will lock its ass in and it gives so much confidence, unbelievable confidence uh, for a pilot. Like, it, you've, just, you've just got to feel it. it and you'll know, and those of you who own Mini Dracs, do put in the comments if you're watching back in the recorded version. Uh, if you own a Mini Drac and you know that, that, that lock-in when it does it, let other people know down in the comments section because it's just unparalleled. The Vorti and the little puppy, which is, I have no idea what you're eating, Squirt. Come here, come on. What are you eating? Come on. Oh. Thank you. Open. Open. What you got? What you got? What you got? I can see it. <laughs> She's eating a bearing. Apologies. Come over that way. Go on. Go find your... There you go. Go find that. Go beat up. Good girl. Coming back to the Vorti. Whereas the mini track had that locked in feeling, the Vorti, it just eats. The wind! I kid you not, there was me and Andy, uh, Andrew uh, Bolton, uh, you know him from the funny farm. We flew that one on, we would stay, We would definitely say less than ideal weather conditions. It was really blowy. That thing, no flight controller, and it was smooth and steady as a rock in the sky. The Vorti, you may say it looks like the Mini Drac. Or the Vorti, or the Vorti looks like a mini drag, or the mini drag looks like a Vorti. Depends which way around you look at it. You may say that they look similar, but when they're in the sky, completely different models. Mini drag, speed, straight line, lock in. Oh, amazing feeling! Feeling. The Vorti is just. It's got a forward swept wing design. The wings are slightly forwards, but the its ability to. Just eat wind is unreal. I've, I've, again, I'm just utterly surprised. I, it might be because it's got a few inches either side on the wingspan. It might be because it's got a thicker wing cord. I don't know what Ewan did as far as the wing cord and any washout which he's been put in there. But the Vorti, wind, less than ideal wind conditions, which is, let's face it, we're in almost December here in the United Kingdom, which means winter and shite weather, sorry, not very good weather uh, for the next couple of months, uh, is gonna be a fantastic choice for those windier days when you wanna get up and do a bit of cruising, uh, because to be honest, you just don't notice the wind with the Vorti at all, okay? So that now raises the question, where does this fit? I don't know. I'm going to go on, get, I'm going to leave all the electronic stock. We'll FPV it up. Uh, again, I'll stay with a 9x4 or 5 propeller because that was what was in the box. Uh, we'll stick it on 4S or I will just check the instructions to make sure we don't have to change the propeller for that. Uh, as far as the motor on the back, uh, the motor looks distinctly like it came out exactly the same factory where Sunny Sky motors are created. And again, that would be no big surprise because there's only a limited number of motor manufacturers out there, especially for these smaller ones, uh, for the smaller brushless motors. Uh, so it says it's a 2216 1300 kV, which is remarkably close to the uh, 1250 kV motor from Sunny Sky, which is also a 2216 motor as well. So where the Dart XL fits in these three, uh, in, in this crowd, 
okay? I do not know. Mini Drac, proven, just an unbelievable feeling in the sky. Uh, I, I, I was the first person to have a Mini Drac in the UK. It stayed here and I've never ever considered that it would find a new home ever. Okay, like I said, top five models of all time. We have the Vorti, which eats wind. I mean that in just like the politest, the nicest way possible. It just ignores it and it just flies off in a straight line. You would have to fly in a hurricane to feel the wind in that thing. Uh, genuinely impressed on that one. And with the Vorti, I, I run mine with 10,400 mini amphibians a pack. So two of those green packs were in there as well. Uh, and it does absolutely fantastically well. So the Dart XL Extreme, no idea where it sits amongst here. Uh, I know that they say that it will fly for 40 minutes in the sky. That said, um, I need to go and get my notepad out here because I was thinking about this earlier before before we went off and hit the live button. And uh, I'll tell, where's, where's my notes? I'll put this up on the screen. So hopefully you can half read my notes on there so you can see what I'm working out here. I was thinking if I wanted a model which would stay in the sky for uh, 40 minutes, Okay, so that's what I was thinking. If that was one of the selling features, what could what could I have which would fly in the sky for 40 minutes? And then I was like, bang, right, well, that's obvious, isn't it? Uh, mini Salon. Okay, so looking at today's prices, or as of today, which is the end of December 2018, I looked up, you can buy a Mini Salon for 50 quid. You can buy the Sunny Sky Motor for £13.56, two quid for a propeller, uh, an eight by six, four servos uh, with eight quid, a run cam split, Okay, FPV camera, uh, video transmitter, which is the Ishin TX526 for nine quid. Uh, oi, stop eating that, thank you very much, little lady. Come over here, you. Thank you. Uh, we got the TX526, don't eat the dart, please, beautiful. Uh, and why don't we chuck in a flight controller as well? Why don't we don't even hold back on the flight controller? And we'll, why don't we get ourselves a Maytek F722 flight controller, which is one of the latest ones and works fantastically well. Uh, that was 32 quid. Uh, also, we'll chuck in a wing PDB as well, which I, again, wasn't available on Banggood, but I just had a quick look on the internet. You can pick them up for 12 quid. Uh, oh, and I did make a boo-boo. We also do need an ESC, a 40 amp ESC, which you can buy for a tenner. Uh, so that came in as a whole package. You could have a mini Talon, with your FPV camera, not even a not very good one, a Run Cam Swift, which are really good cameras. I've got several of them here. I can see one over there on the um, Mini Skywalker. Sorry, uh, Sky Hunter uh, over there. Really, really good camera. Really good video transmitter. TX526s, they're really, really good. Uh, I didn't actually include antennas, so you'll have to figure out on that one on there. Um, and the ESC and a flight controller and a few sundries. £161, all in, okay? And that was what my conclusion was going to be, was that if you want a model which will fly for 40 minutes in the sky, I think you would be nuts buying this one, because a model, just because the way it looks, and the company which it's in, okay, would be nuts, okay? Um, so if you want a model which stays in the sky for 40 minutes, for almost exactly the same money, because I think this one was 143 quid, something like that, on Banggood right now, uh, is for exactly the same money, give or take a tenner or two, you can have a full-blown Mini Talon with complete setup, including a flight controller. Um, yeah, it's a tough comparison on that, just that one specification for fly for 40 minutes. There's one thing to throw an inefficient wing, but... The other one is that when you start mucking around with efficiency, unfortunately, you get, you are going to end up uh, in the mini uh, in the mini talent territory, uh, and as such, you are going to end up with almost uncomparable. If that makes sense, you dig in vagina. Wait, thank you, beautiful. Right, let's move on to your comments. Uh, that thing looks gorgeous. Thank you, Kevin. I did my best. I even shaved my head before I came on live. Thank you, sir. Uh, Anthony says, good for calling. Absolutely, it fits in the bin. Uh, Anthony also says, 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 good motors. Yes, I, I think the motor's going to be pretty good. My hunch is, and again, it was hinted at it, 
Uh, even looking at the uh, prop nut on the back, that looks very similar to the Sunny Sky. It's not branded, just sort of Sunny Sky. Like I said, you can't knock Zero HD for the time, effort and energy which they put into the design uh, and the whole package which you've got here because there's quality well made parts all over the shop and someone still eating the bearing. Come on you, out. Thank you. That's what she's eating, a little toe rag. That's the back bearing out of um, a motor I fried a couple of days ago which I got replacing in there. Uh, Anthony says, just got my Sky Hunter. Happy days mate, happy days. Uh, let's have a quick look. <laughs> uh, so Bruce, you've had a model start for days, given a suitably high tree. Uh, we had a recent adventure of that one as well. Foam Dave uh, stuck his uh, Bixler wing, uh, fly, Bixler flying wing, uh, in a tree for overnight at least. So yeah, we'll, ha we'll see what happens there. Right, with that said, I'm sure, I'm sorry, I've done my best to, to cover everything I can uh, about the Dart XL, but always remember, we always hold our final judgment until we get the models uh, in the sky. Uh, what am I gonna modify on this one? There's gonna be two things which I'm gonna do. Oi! Thank you, not you. Apologies, dog trying to eat another model. <laughs> it's gonna be fun. She's only been here for a couple of weeks. It's causing an absolute carnage. Imagine what it's going to be like on the flight line. It's not even going there. Trying to summarise, we hold our final judgement until we get the model in the sky and hopefully the next video which get come out here uh, will be with the Dart XL in the sky uh, and we're just not going to hold it back. It's either going to, we're either going to go stupid fast for as long as possible uh, or we're just going to write it off. Okay, because that's what needs to be done to a model like this. No flying like a not a dog, the other animal with flow. Anyway, my point there, the modifications, two carbon rods in the nose to give it the extra strength, just from what I've seen on YouTube already. Uh, and I will put some lamina on the bottom of the wings as well, just because of where we fly and also the time of the year as well. We're in December, we've had sideways rain here for the last six hours or so here in Bristodia. It's not been very nice at all. Uh, so as such, I think I do need to, um, yeah, protect it a little bit. Uh, let's have a quick look. Uh, train that dog to fetch FPV models that land several fields away. Oi! That's a power cable, you plank. Please don't do that. Uh, Vince says, do not sit at 40% throttle either. No, we have a throttle switch which is on and off. Uh, we'll do our best just to get it up in the sky. Uh, we'll get it up in the sky and we'll just see how it feels. Again, that's the vital point of a maiden flight. Uh, it's just to get it into the sky, trim it in if it needs trimming, um, and just get a feel for how it feels on the sticks. Okay, vitally important. There's no point going straight into it at FPV. I, I know I've done it with other models in the past, just shut the goggles down and lobbed it and off we go. Um, but then that has caught me out a few times as well. Uh, so yeah, we'll just do it line of sight just to see what it looks like. See, uh, another massive point is see what its glide angle's like as well. The, one of the things with the Mini Drac is that it always lands hot, okay? She always comes in hot. Uh, the, the Vorti, not really much. is much more of a bit of a puppy in the sky compared to the Mini Drac. So I don't know how this one's gonna come in and it's gonna react. So if I think like to the EF Extra, for example, that thing bloody glided for days to come in. And it took me like on the first maiden flight, which I'm sure you saw on YouTube, uh, on the channel, uh, is I think it took me like four attempts. And I ended up when I got so far around uh, to just knock the speed off. Uh, and then we got it in and we got it in safely. I think you even landed in the field next to us, just to be sure. Um, wait, thank you. Yeah, someone's not seen the power cables going across the floor before, so it's uh, taken her interest. But if you don't stick your teeth in that, because that's actually connected to the cameras and the microphone pop it. Thank you, beautiful. Well done. Right. On that note, have I missed anything? I don't think I've missed anything. I've made the point which I wanted to make, um, which is that if you want a model which is going to fly for 40 minutes in the sky, the Mini Talon in my humble opinion, would be a far better choice, or better better choice and better value for money because it's more model for your money uh, and you can have the whole setup, including the FPV camera, video transmitter, and a flight controller uh, out of the box, in like in the, in the model uh, for like 10 quid more, something like that. 
Uh, what have we got on here? Poop scoop. Sorry, just going through my notes. So I don't want to miss anything for you. Poop scoop on the nose. Looks like it's going to be an issue. The angling of the FPV camera. It makes for some really good footage. But if you're aiming for a gap, you need that camera level. Because if you're coming in, and if you're, imagine your camera's pointing down, okay, you're going to be up here in the sky. You need to, uh, and then of course you shoot, shoot a gap, you're going to hit the top of the gap. You need the camera straight so that when you go through the gap, you're really going through the gap, okay? Hello, beautiful. Well done. Uh, fake air vent, which we spoke about on the front, it's just there to catch poo, okay? I can't see any other reason in there because by the time you ram uh, the foam in there to, for the camera to go in, there is no ability for the air to get underneath it. So I definitely think that while the rest of the model I'm sure you'll agree. It's very, very well thought out. 10 out of 10. Nose area. Could do with some work. I'm doing my best to be very polite there. Uh, servers on the bottom, I just don't get that. I get it because it's for aesthetics, okay? However, if you look at the other two models here, you've got the mini drac. Those holes are on the top, okay? And the reason why they're on the top is because you need maximum torque out of your servos. Uh, to, to give it some meat when you're doing some crazy stuff with them. What else have we got on there? Wing construction I'm happy about as well. Uh, and again, I've just written in my notes on there. Um, it, it's a really good attempt. Just, not, I'm not saying, no, that's wrong. That's really bad of me, actually. I'm not saying attempt. Someone spent a real amount of time, effort, and energy to build that one. The same as the mini draft. There was, obviously, a shed load of time, effort, and energy to build that one. The Vorti, that shows as well, just because the way it flies and the way it handles the wind, okay? Um, Eowyn over there has just done a fantastic job, the same as Chris Click from uh, Right Wing. The guys over at Zod HD, it's obvious that they've spent a lot of time designing this model. I just hope it flies half as well as it looks. At full knacker! As we don't want to be flying like a pussy. Right, it is time for me to wrap up. If you have any questions or comments about the Dart Extreme XL, please just ask in either in the comments section underneath this video, or what I'll do, I'll include a link to the Facebook group, which is down in the video description, just click on show more, uh, and you'll be able to join in with almost 3,000 pilots like me and you. Now, that group has got really, really big. There's, there's so much banter going on there and during the week. It keeps me bemused as well. To, anyway, go and take a look. If you have any questions about that, in the comments section underneath this video or nip across to the Facebook group, hit the join button in the top right hand corner uh, and one of us will pick up your request uh, in a day or two's time. Also, remember, we always hold off final judgment on a model until we get it in the sky. It's all fine and dandy us unboxing it and talking about different aspects here on the desk. It's a, in fact, it's a very valuable part of the process, especially when we can compare it to similar models okay we found that remember with the mini drac that locked in feeling unparalleled just uncomparable to any other model the vorti its ability to cope with less than ideal wind conditions and the larger battery load which you can put in it too uh, and a bargain 89 quid compared to 150 quid okay give or take a few pennies where does this dart fit in the middle i don't know We'll find out in the next couple of days' time. So, yeah, look out for the maiden of that one. Uh, if it comes home in a couple of pieces, I'm not going to cry because I know, and you will know, that we really did, I hate to say it, a bit of a pun, rag its nuts off. Uh, so we'll see what happens in over the next couple of days. If you're new here, by the way, my name's Matt. Welcome aboard. Don't forget to press the red subscribe button underneath this video, and it's time for me to go. And Lunakins, which is... Self, Matt, a little lunikins. See you again. Cheerios. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Taras. <laughs>